Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Boundary Systems Weekly Webinar Series. My name is Nicole Daringer from Boundary Systems, and thank you for joining us. Always be sure to check our website at boundarysys.com for upcoming topics, or visit our YouTube channel to see the ones we've already covered. Today's presenter is Jonas Hardner, and he comes to us from our sister company, um, PDS Vision, over in Europe. And he will be presenting Simon Soft, Simon Soft excuse me. Uh, just a few housekeeping notes. Participants are in listen-only mode at this time. Um, Jonas welcomes questions throughout his presentation. Please use the chat function um, on your uh, the the pop-out screen for a GoToWebinar to ask some questions as you have them. Um, and let him know also, just because we're all in different countries, we just want to make sure that you're not experiencing a delay as he goes from slide to slide or have any technical issues. But please use that chat pane in order to communicate. I think that that's all I have. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jonas to get started. Hello, everyone. Good morning or um, uh, good evening, as it is to me here in, in Europe. Um, so yeah, thanks for having me, Nicole, and and this is my second now boundary uh, webinar I've, I've been doing, and I'm still uh, nervous about the whole uh, sharing webinar experience where I do all the talking and there's no um, response. But I'll I'll try my very best again. Um, and today I'm going to talk about uh, Simon Soft, our, our our system for uh, managing Arbor Text in XML03. Uh, shortly on myself and PDS Vision, I was um, started my, my career back at, at PTC uh, many years ago, uh, working with Creo and Windchill, um, and started uh, with PDS Vision back in 2007. Um, and at, at that point, that's really when we uh, gave birth also to the, the Simons of product that you'll be seeing today. Um, PDS Vision is a um, a PTC partner and platinum reseller um, and who a little over a year ago started to work together with, with Boundary Systems over in the US and, and we have a predominantly our business here in, in Northern Europe, Sweden, Germany, UK and um, uh, those countries. Uh, that's me on the picture um, and, and those are actually my hobbies as well. So with that said, um, let's go into sort of the, the, the presentation. Um, when we started back in 2007-8, um, there was a big downturn in, in, in the economy to, starting 2008. And many of the companies were starting to spend more money and more focus on their off-the-market business. So we followed and, um, and also started to look at, at the offerings there. Uh, PTC had just acquired uh, a company called ArborText um, for technical documentation. Not sure they exactly knew how they were planning to integrate that at that point, but it all came together to quite nice, nice portfolio of the market solutions. What they did. So basically, we we work with all the aspects from from sort of uh, service bill of materials to off the market portals to the IoT experience with, with now with ThingWorks. Um, and, and the technical information uh, based on but based on XML, and I think what we found quite early on with with Windchill um, as as a content management for our deploy only for technical documentation, it lacked some of the translation management uh, capabilities we then needed, and and so we saw a need for a uh, faster and and more um, to the point solution for those uh, those companies. Still, we very much liked Arbortex because it was a it was a great product because it had both the sort of authoring side and and the publishing side um, and and also the way to build style sheets uh, built into it. So so we got very attached to that. Um, so we married these two into what you'll see today as as uh, Simonsoft. And even though we deliver all these systems, um, it's not necessarily that we're trying to sell this as one system. These are different systems, but we have created a, a number of different integration points between them. So we can, for instance, uh, produce information today in, in Simonsoft and, and update our, our aftermarket uh, spare part portal um, 
by automatically. We can uh, create content in, in Simonsoft and we could sync the release with the release in Windchill should you want to have uh, that type of integration. So, so it's really, uh, even though there they are different systems as PDS Vision, we have spent quite some time and, and to integrate the, the platforms with each other. Um, so right, yeah, for those of you new to XML uh, authoring and XML challenge, uh, what, what is the challenge then? Well, we're, we're seeing a bigger and bigger variety of, of product ranges. We see more variants of each product. Um, we see that company starts to support more, uh, more languages as, as we're going global. Um, and, and on top of that, we're, we're also asked to publish our technical documentation as both printed material um, and at the same time, probably some different web content or as products getting more and more computers um, and screens on the product, you're actually asking the, the, for the technical documentation from your product. So I don't think anybody today um, doesn't see a benefit in, in consuming the, the user manual in a car. Uh, from the screen in the car. That's, that's every car will deliver their user manual there, there today. Um, and I, I think this challenge um, is, is, is quite common all over. And we, we've been trying to solve this with, with traditional um, desktop applications like Word and, and, and InDesign and, and all those. And we, we end up in a nightmare of multiple documents that we have to manage. Um, extreme uh, increased cost in, in language translation and uh, supporting different businesses and, and, and business systems uh, becomes uh, more and more problematic. Another trend that we're seeing also the, the complexity of the product. Um, I'm going to talk about this a little towards the end of the presentation today where we see that the technical author or the technical writer um, who in the early days was, was a person who pretty much understood the product all the way through, through uh, how it worked. Today, when we embed more software and more electronic components on the product, um, the, the product gets more and more complex, um, not only for our customers, but also for, for the internal uh, person who's supposed to document it. So we're going to need to collaborate much tighter with, with R&D and development and, and software engineers and, and all of those people uh, to make sure that the, the content that we produce is, uh, is the right one. Um, so how, how do we solve that? Well, the, well, the first thing then is, of course, that we, um, we go away from any desktop uh, type two and move into uh, XML. And XML stands for Extensive Markup Language. It is a, a format. Um, that is, is neutral and it doesn't really care about the way it looks when you author. So it separates between three things. It separates with, with, between the content, the information that you're authoring, um, and the structure, sort of how do you build up that, that content, and the layout, how does the content look. And we use what we call a schema or a DTD to, to define the structure, and we use a style sheet uh, to define the, the, the layout of this. And by separating content structure and layout, we can literally reuse the same content for many different outputs, and we can reuse the same content for then many different um, brands or layouts or, or, or publishing uh, prints, or if you have it. So this gives us a lot of benefits um, that, that typically solves these, these challenges of, 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 uh, of a growing business and, and, and growing variants. And as we do that, we basically then, let me see here, how does this work? Um, we basically then can't use Word and, and InDesign anymore. We use an XML editor. So what I have now on screen is, is the Arbitext editor um, which is then the XML editor uh, delivered by, by PTC. And just opening it up, it looks pretty like any sort of word or, or any other type of, of authoring tool. And it actually tries to pretty much mimic that um, look and feel a little bit because it's, even though XML is a very technical um, definition of, of a format, um, 
we're still trying to give the user user experience that that allows them to uh, uh, allows them to 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 easier navigate around that. But you'll see the difference as soon as I open up uh, a document here. Um, the now I'm 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 presented with the tags with the with the uh, information objects within the XML content. But still, through our text, we're, we're really trying to give the user an experience that, that the do document looks at least slightly something like what, what it should do if, you, if you'd print it. So a title becomes bold, uh, a subtitle uh, slightly less bold, and, and the, the, the colors can, can mimic the colors in, in, in real life. But in essence, it's all... Um, tags and and what's held within a tag is is the format what will define the format later on in the style sheet but as as we own both the authoring and the publishing technology is just um, a click away for us to actually find out how would this document look if i if i put it to print um, so i can always hit a preview and get my my uh, xml look and feel based on on uh, on this on this preview and now we see things like um, you know, a front page uh, formatting. We see uh, text turned and, and bleeding over the edge to make a nice, nice printing quality. We see that the uh, the chapter would always go, come on the right hand 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 page. And this is our style sheet that defines this. So the, the 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 that's where all this intelligence sits in 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 how this uh, in, in how this happens. So from an authoring perspective. It, it's a big, it's a transition where you simply have to sort of stop thinking about what will my document look like and instead think of what information object am I trying to uh, author at, at this point. So that's, that's, the, that's the very basics of, of, of uh, XML uh, authoring. Um, but with this concept, we will still have some other interesting problems. Because what we're now going to try to do is we're going to try to reuse information. We're going to try to have standard texts, standard blocks of texts and the images and technical data and other things that we reuse all over. And we're, we're still going to have to manage things like releases, uh, versions, uh, all of that, those sorts of things. And we also have to manage the translated versions and, and all these things. So Altogether, we, we, we will need some form of database to work with this. Working with XML without a database uh, is possible, but, but, but proves quite painful, especially as you move into to language translation and you have to keep of version, uh, versions of languages and what has been translated and, and, uh, and not. So then um, the layer in which we would store our information uh, is what we call a CMS or a CCMS uh, sometimes. Um, and in, in our world, the, the Simonsoft product then is really uh, this. It sort, of, it sort of sits in between the creation, creation side and the delivery side and manages the content, the translation, and can also automate things like publishing. So the way we view the total system definition is that we have what we call a create side here we have three typical use cases. We have the traditional authoring use case, um, a, a technical writer who writes their documents. Um, and then we have a review use case, which is can be many different reviews. It can be an internal review. It can be language review. It can be a, an external review. It can be uh, so, so. But the, 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 the main challenge with the review is because we are authoring in XML, we can't have XML editors for everyone who's supposed to review it, but we still want to have a collaboration around um, the document where other people can make inputs and, and comments. And preferably, we want to have it on the same place and not have sticky notes on a PDF from 20 different people that we're supposed to feed back into our document. Um, contribute. used to uh, XML authoring and potentially we don't want to expose them to that complexity of, of, of a product. We simply want to have something easy 
uh, quick loadable, preferably web-based, that they can just um, write content, um, write an article, write a to review and 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 enhance that uh, content before it's it becomes released on the delivery side um, we're also relying uh, a lot on on the PTC Arbitex product uh, with some uh, quite relative uh, some enhancements of our own so we have uh, partly developed uh, our own responsive web design so uh, um, an HTML5 output that, that we then have plugged into to Arbitex. Um, we have, uh, of course, PDFs. And I would say, without a doubt, PTC Arbitex is one of the strongest PDF engines for XML on the market. It, it really has a lot of capability as in advanced styling of PDFs. And styling PDFs is not necessarily always easy because we're held to a page, we're held to an A4 or an A5, and and the limits of that and it's not like you you try to style html that can just flow here we are really bound by by pages and and and, and page context and the other enhancements that we're uh, we have done is then uh, a format called squarm which is used for learning management so if you have e-learning or, or lms systems we could output that and and the last one knowledge store is is a new product of ours which is not which will then even be a, another layer of, of um, searching and browsing throughout all of your uh, all of your documentation. And, and the idea is really with a system that you're supposed to be able to start simple. So from day one, really, we we aimed for for making it cloud based. So it should be you know, we, we be able to de be deployed um, within a couple of hours. We can we can spin up a new machine. Um, we still wanted the system to be release centric so that we really understand that that the difference between um, a document which is in work and released and and we then also wanted to the translation management has been a, a lot of the roi a lot of why people have paid for the system up front has been translation management so we see that as, as some of the the very simple tasks um, but we have now over after a number of years of, of, of production come into quite some advanced customer requirements as well. So, uh, you know, over the years we have built uh, quite advanced things. And, and I think a lot of this is about automation, a lot about, you know, no longer should you have to print out your PDFs, uh, put them on your website and, and, you know, do it language by language, renaming them, um, or you know, no longer should you have to worry yourself about manually entering in technical information into your uh, TI sheets or whatever. Um, so all of those kinds of automation levels have we have we have worked on 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 over the years. But the point is that even with a company with if you're as, as little as you know, we have quite a few customers with just as much as one single uh, tech writer working in the system uh, on a cloud-based environment and, and releasing documents, translating and, and reviewing documents uh, with the platform. And of course, comes without saying, the system also needs to be affordable um, as, as, as we're supposed to support uh, small to medium-sized businesses for this. More complex view of the product. Um, not sure how I'm going to go through the through it all, but as I'm distributing this as uh, as content as well, then then for sure you can look at uh, some of the uh, components in here, and I'm I'm going to talk specific. I'm going to focus uh, my today. One thing we did early on is that we found that many companies were coming into projects with XML, um, having to spend quite some time on defining what XML standard they should use or what setup they should use or how in, and spent obscene amount of time on the document look and feel. Um, we can still do this. We can still 
allow our customers to elaborate um, on whatever schema, DTD, mod modularization level, or whatever they want to use in the system. And we can engage in, in year-long uh, workshops if, if that's uh, what you're looking for. But the, the, the majority part of our customer are looking for something else. They want to go quickly to production. They want to go straight in from, from where they are today with a, a word in design or similar format and, and, and quickly come up to speed. And, and to do that, we basically then created a concept that we call TechDoc. And the TechDoc concept consisted of a number of things that enables us to deliver this much faster than, than we would have had to uh, if, if, we're, if we were asking the customer always about things. So instead, we're telling uh, our customers that here is, a, here is a couple of standards that you could adhere to. Here are some predefined styles that if you're happy with you know, working with a document look and feel like many of the larger or the you know best practices type OEMs have done, then then you know just take what we have and 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 go with that rather than in, invent your own. Um, so we boiled all of this knowledge, if you will, down into this this uh, tech doc concept. And as part of being a customer of ours, uh, you actually get access to all of this, uh, this applications and, and all of these things as well. And um, it, today, I would say that an average new customer um, with, with um, smaller customer, one to three authors, is typically a, a project where we start the authoring process uh, within two to three weeks and where we release um, the final version of the system with, with all the style sheets uh, enabled uh, in 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 a time frame of about three months, um, and and we do it actually with a relatively low uh, consultative impact on the on the project as well. All right, so four principles of reuse with XML. Uh, there are uh, this is. Uh, Perhaps one of the ugliest slides I've ever produced, but it, it has a purpose. We typically think of XML reuse and, and content management reuse as number one case here. Basically, we create components of text and images that we then reuse from a database into a document. Could be a um, warning, could be a, an image, could be a, a chapter or a section or a topic or whatever we want to call it. So this is the traditional XML uh, reuse uh, case. Um, the second one is something we, I, that is referred to as conditional text by some, and which we, in our case, in Arbitex case, refer to as profiling. It's basically the idea that we create a, a document which has um, many different outputs. So we can author like a 150% document so the document will contain information that then can be um, digested in, into different documents. So for instance, it could be that the gross document here would be a service manual that has four different service levels. But when I publish the document, I would only want to, my customer to see service level one type of document. So the net document would then be, be much, much shorter. Uh, and I, I do this all within the realm of the document. Um, the third one is, is something we use for technical data and, um, uh, and for uh, GUI strings, uh, computer GUI strings. So like a, a computer, like a, a text in a screen or um, a technical data. That is actually something which is very good to link. Typically your company would have someone to manage all the technical data. But if you enter it into the to the authoring of a technical document and suddenly that changes, not only does it impact that document because that section was now reused in 20 other documents, it impacts 20 other documents and it actually impacts translation. So you actually have to go translate these documents in order to fix it. So what we prefer to do is instead link this information to say, here's the master data information and here in the document, we have the slave of, of that information. And then finally, we have what I like to call an intelligent copy. It's absolutely no linking whatsoever, but if we were to 
reuse a little bit more of our um, information than um, perhaps we could uh, you know save cost in in translation and save cost in um, and also keeping a consistent language by, by reusing text we can make sure that something that we're infusing into the document has been reviewed and released before and we're much more likely to to succeed in that uh, again um, so with those four principles in mind I, I, I was thinking of, of, of showing a bit of the system and and uh, um, and 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 uh, take a little bit look on that so what we try to do with Simonsoft is to uh, keep it as much as possible um, uh, the way into the system for the author uh, as much as possible from the editing environment so we didn't want to separate um, the author from sitting in their screen and where their text is uh, just to go out and fetch some some contents from 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 the system so basically um, the system is 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 kind of built in to 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 Arbitex. so you'd you'd access the system um, and for those of you who have might have used um, Windchill or similar, it's the exact same API that we're using into uh, Arbitex to uh, to view it. Um, and the system has kind of three ways in. This is one way, Simonsoft, you, you can come into, but there is also a, a web browser entry to the system. So from a web browser, you can do, you do a number of operations like search. Uh, you can do um, releasing here. Uh, a lot of the translation functions sit in the in the web browser uh, function. And then there's a third way in, but that's kind of a backdoor. That's actually if you want to um, upload multiple images or multiple files, then you can actually access the system through your own um, uh, Office Explorer. And, and and go but kind of a backdoor into the system typically mostly used by administrators or people who actually when when we migrate content in in and out of the in and out of the system so now if i'm opening a document through uh, through the cms so so basically what you're seeing here is the cms folder structure exposed through uh, arbitex so if i'm opening a document in in uh, from from this point, you see we'll see a few differences. The first difference that will strike you is this little box, and further down here you see that the box there is also some some lines. And basically, what this is, this, these are the files. So these are the reusable objects that we referred to earlier as as building blocks of of a document. So this document then consists of this information section. It consists of this section, and here is a, a, an admonition, a warning within that section. So um, I'm now starting to sort of build up a, a logical structure where I can then, 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 then use this content. At this point, I can't still author, right? Because it will say that um, it's, it's read only, and it's because it's checked in and it's then, 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 then not open up. So if I want to author it, I simply have to check it out. Um, and as I check it out, I will then see a, a, a bolder line and I will see that the document is now checked out by me. Um, the other users who are in this very same document, they instead will see a lock. They will see that I have locked it and they can't now um, uh, access this, doc this typical section. But that doesn't hinder them from authoring somewhere else in the document or, or, or or doing something on, on some other topic. Just for the sake of, 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 of demonstrating, I'm, I'm actually also gonna check uh, this little thing out here uh, to see what happens. And it gives me a warning here, it says the object introduction is used in at least two contexts. So what it tells me is that, although I'm trying to author in, in, in this context, there is actually two other, the two documents that depend on this, meaning I might be, it's not just the document I'm viewing it through that, that that it happens so I should perhaps be careful before I go and change that so I can actually then hold myself before I do it and see well wasn't it this one and see actually in in what documents is it used okay so it's used in those two documents 
I pretty much knew that, so so that that that's fine. Um, and uh, that way, I can I really control uh, the way I'm 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 changing something for for many months. And we typically also organize the content within the content management system in a way that that makes sense for this. So, for instance, we would put um, all the common objects under a common folder, and here we would have the warnings, the legal texts, all the things that you can think of that um, when you change them, you really want it to change uh, uh, universally over over, uh, over over the system. And um, yeah, let's go back to the document, and let me actually let me. Uh, why don't I? Check this one uh, out, anyways, and and ignore that warning and see. Um, and let's take a little look on that linking we talked about earlier, or or some of the things that that we talked about um, referencing information. So if we scroll up to this document, you will see that the name. So by the way, the customer here is, is a customer called Verdesta. They're in in Europe and in Canada. And they're, they're they're doing things that gets dragged behind the tractor. Um, this is a part of their user manual that we uploaded for for demo purposes, and it has um, it has a master language in in English, and it, so it's authored in English as master, and there is actually a Swedish translation on it. Um, no other languages, unfortunately. Um, and we see that the title here has has a, a weird tag. It says term ref link and platform and subtitle has another term ref so basically in order to keep content neutral for reuse what we can do is we can say well the definition in this document is that the product name is is seedhawk um, and the product type is sh800c so if we were to change this oops I have to get out um, so if we were to change this to seed cow, which does not make a whole lot of sense, um, we'd basically see that the title would update, uh, but also content like here in the introduction chap chapter would, would update, meaning we can really write our content in a way that it's, it's neutral when we, when we author it, but we use it in many different contexts. And it's still from a translation and release perspective would be the same. Uh, same content, so that's a little bit one of the use cases for for the for the reuse case with with uh, with linked. Um, why don't we play around with the uh, the the use case of of profiles then, and the use case of of conditional uh, formatting? And this works really on any level. It, it can even work down to a level of a list item. I'm not sure I would uh, argue that it's a good idea to do it, but I could actually apply a profile to this. And this may be the, one of the simplest profiles. Uh, this profile tree can be extremely complex, but here it's simply internal or external. So either this content is available if you're as an internal um, viewer or as an external. So let's just profile this as, as, as external. Um, and, and you get a little tag saying that now this point D uh, warning tape is, is external. If I now go and publish this, I'm going to publish it in a little different way this time. I'm going to publish it through um, making a full PDF. So the, the preview simplifies the PDF. It has a little lighter um, images and, and, and gets a little faster things done. And I'm going to instead uh, uh, use the, the uh, full uh, publishing to PDF, which is going to take a slight, slightly longer time. but um, is going to give me a higher quality type uh, document as, as well. Um, and, and here, of course, uh, we have a different style sheet applied. It's, it's the uh, Verstor style sheet and not the, um, uh, the one you saw before. Uh, you see that we can actually also embed uh, texts on onto the the document that comes from the the cms so like attributes or dates or things like that um we can we can stamp it with with a status so that if it's a document that is not yet released it can be stamped uh, as, as as draft and, and and things like that and um, uh, coming back here let's 
review. Um, this was D, warning tape was there. And here, basically, D is watch your feet. So it removed D and, and reorganized uh, the, the, the order of A, B, C, D um, uh, to, to reflect my, my view of this publish. So, that, so that's the a very simple example of, of how this could be used. We have customers with um, quite advanced profiling structure, which is basically using the whole profiling to, to define uh, the product output and automate um, to basically, they have linked the profiling with the configuration string from the product configurator, enabling them to actually um, release a, a new document, which is completely tailored to the product they're selling in, in a matter of seconds. So uh, it can be used, but to be used carefully that because that, it, it's, um, it can be quite complex to manage those uh, documents. I thought I'd actually also try to um, show you a um, uh, one of the samples with the uh, fourth example with the sort of intelligent copy paste. And uh, what we implemented a couple of years ago is is a uh, what something we call CMS Assist. And because I've hadn't authored anything, it doesn't come up with anything, but if I would, were to uh, start authoring something and release um, my hands, it would prompt me with texts already authored in the same context. So it would have to be, um, a, if I'm authoring in a paragraph, it would have to come from a paragraph. Um, it would suggest similar texts to me that have been um, published earlier. And if, if the icon here is green, not only has it been, been um, released earlier, it has actually been translated earlier. So I can see here that this, this very, um, this section or this um, paragraph has been uh, authored earlier, released, and then translated to Swedish. And it's actually pending translation to those languages, English, uh, US, English, Spanish, or, or, or whatever. Um, and here I have a choice. I can either, you know, um, continue to type and ignore what I'm seeing, or I can actually uh, insert this one. Now, what it does then is it actually keeps sort of a memory of this. Um, we don't normally show this. I do it for demo purposes, but um, it keeps it in memory that is actually reused from a string so that when I send this on translation, this text will now be auto-translated for all those languages it has been translated for before. So by doing this, I'm not necessarily reusing the content in a linking way, but I'm ensuring that I'm saving translation cost and I'm consistent with my, my terminology that, that I'm, I'm using when I author. Um, yeah, and this is the way it goes on. I, I, I build up my document, I, I release, um, a new version. Um, I continue to 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 sort of um, evolve uh, the document. Um, and there was one kind of last thing I wanted to show on the document, which is then the which we talked a little bit about, which was the technical data. So in the end here, in fact, I have a technical data section um, typical for for user or or operating uh, manuals that that there is a little bit of a, a technical data session. And as I described earlier, the problem for us has been that people keep, you know, tech, uh, uh, R&D keeps changing them into the very last minute. And I can't, if I send my document to translation, get it back, and these things changes, I can't, you know, change them without impacting translation. So it gets very complex of changing them. Um, we've also found that getting customers to integrate with other systems is, is sometimes hard. So we've also now released a, a very simply, simple way in order to, to, uh, to manage this data. So what I thought I'd do is just uh, kind of check this section out. Um, and perhaps let's uh, add a new row below here. I have no idea. And then we do like this, we just copy paste the, this one and we'll, let's get in some maximum cooling agent or something in there. Um, 
and we add a, a paragraph here and then we actually uh, hit another dialog so instead of me typing now the the, the value of of uh, of the uh, uh, of, of, of the technical value I actually go to my a little browser that we have built in and this browser will then look into the system I'll use a technology called key references which is an XML technology and it will basically fetch those values that is relevant for this uh, product so I'll, um, you can see that I'm in the, in the product type SH800C. These are the, the, the values I should work with. And from here on, I simply insert my value. Uh, not a very uh, relevant uh, number for, the, for a cooling agent, um, and, uh, but I think you get the, the idea. And the value that I'm seeing on screen is literally the value um, which is relevant at the moment. Um, and and because it's it's um, at the the value which is at the moment is when I hit publish that's the value that's going to be in my print so I can keep changing these values up until the very day I actually publish the document and if I were to change them again I could just republish the document and it would automatically have those uh, have those updated. So we have uh, one customer that uses this to, to manage all of their um, technical data sheets um, and automate uh, that anytime something changes from a technical value, uh, it simply updates and publishes a new document uh, overnight uh, for them. Um, so yeah, so with that um, said, maybe what I could do is actually show that, that the file that I was, I was working off here is is a is an excel sheet and it's managed as an excel sheet so the data comes from um come from that excel sheet so uh so this is actually the document and if i if i uh we can actually view it in the web browser um you can see that it is it's an excel file it was apparently done here by by thomas um I could actually download the content and we could take a look at it and you can see. So as long as you keep this structure to your technical data, um, we can just import the Excel file into the CMS and we can then just sort of uh, reuse this um, for, for documentation purposes. All right, um, going back to the document, I think you know one of the last things I wanted to talk about, which is uh, one of my favorite topics, is, is actually uh, translation. Now, I, I am aware that I'm talking to uh, a lot of uh, American people here, and um, it's 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 not you know you're not as needy of translations as we have been in Europe. As soon as you you start producing something in in, in Europe, you you hit 15 languages uh, first week, um, and and many of our customers here in Europe they're facing up to 30, 35 languages at at this point. Uh, going into to old languages like Arabic and Hebrew and and, and all sorts of, of uh, challenges. Um, but if we open up the the, the document in, um, in in the web browser instead, and um, we can see that first of all we can see that this document, uh, this is the name of the document, um, and it apparently has been released twice we can see so there's an a release and a b release of the document and there was apparently some translations that started and and then and we can see the the version the iteration they they were they were done we can see a little bit about the, the sort of history of the file and and, and dependencies and we can see basically some check-ins that were done and some comments uh, based on those check-ins what was what was changed uh, over over uh, over the period um, and we can here a little bit visualize also the um, the way how it looks. So basically here on, 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 on issue 140, it was released to A and then translated for two languages based on that. And then on 189, it was released to B. And what we do with the system is because we want to simplify translation, is we actually, if the document is structured here in what we call the author area, we flatten it out in the release area. And the purpose of this is two things it's, it's for review purposes and it's for translation purposes and we, if we do this properly the translator can actually instead of getting 400 data files and data objects they can get one file 
per language from us that they're supposed to translate. And they they pretty very much like that because otherwise we're taking words and and we're taking um, content out of context for them and and uh, that will reduce quality on, on on the translation. So we early on decided to sort of have this idea where we have an author area where you sort of work towards the future, the release area uh, where you then have release first pending and then and then you release it and then translation area which then comes back into the system as well. And 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 then creates this translation memory that 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 we generate. So if I go to the um, the, the release B, which is obviously the latest release of the, of this one, um, just to demonstrate that that translation capability, I'm going to try to do um, I'm going to do a pre-translate report. So this is just a report. It's not a doesn't change anything in the system or anything, and and it will just tell me. If I were to translate this document to Swedish now, with how it now looks and the changes that has been done and released, um, what what would the kind of impact be if I if I if I did it? And and it gives me a little preview and it says, well, basically you're you're going to be able to reuse 97% of the document. Um, so out of 1,663 words, we're going to have 46 words. It actually tells me those words are already in progress because I already shipped this to the translation agency. But as we're never translating them ourselves, they're never going to be translated. So the the, the but the objective here is that it understands that that uh, you know it should only um, it should only work with those 46 words. And so all of this content comes in 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 Swedish. Here probably somebody changed an image, but that doesn't really impact my by document, but we can see at the end of the document somebody added a technical data session, and that has still not gone through. So those are the 46 words that didn't um, go through translation, and and the system really also tries to capture as much content as possible when it translate. Um, so if it can translate a whole chapter, it will do. Um, if it can't, it will then basically say, you know, this is I can just translate the title. So um, you, you can decide for yourself and you can put some advanced settings to this if you're not happy with with how it filters and 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 so on but it, it, it is quite thoroughly tested with with many translation agencies and um believe me it's it it saves a ton of money for our for our customers that that they otherwise would uh, would pay with those um, with those companies so yeah so um from here on, I'm I'm pretty much sort of done with my demonstration. I have um, uh, hopefully shown you a little bit about the four um, four use cases. Um, I have, uh, you know, we looked at how you include something in a document, how you create a gross net type of, of documentation, how you look, and how you then sort of make an uh, intelligent copy using our our, our, our CMS module. Um, before I end, I, I just wanted to touch on two things which I wasn't planning on demonstrating. Um, I was just planning to talk about them. Um, we just released uh, our first uh, concept version of a web editor to the system. So for and and we were thinking it, of, of of the web-based authoring more as an um, contribute type of, of module so that if you have people in your organization who don't want to use an, an, an XML editor um, you could just send them a link to the system they can open up the link and they can go and start author um, and 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 we, what we did is we basically work with finding um, the the what we think is the world's uh, easiest editor to use and we then have OEM contracted that editor into the system. So, we, so Simon's of Web Editor will be based on not on our development. It will be based on on an, on a world class editor. Um, and we really think it's 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 a great product because it's it's so easy to use and it it really <clears throat> it's it, it really you know uses all the modern technology for making sure you can handle quite large documents online. Um, it, 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 and and uh, as you as you author, you can actually see here that it is XML. It, it, it's but it doesn't display the tags. It really hides them for the user. So you can kind of go advanced on it. But if you just want to author something, 
and you just want to create a template where somebody else does it, or does this, it's, it's, it's kind of out of the box. And you see that the lock here indicates that it's um, unlocked from the from the CMS and, and you're allowed to author. Um, and, and, oops, uh, and basically one, once it's updated, it, it, um, it will then update the version in the CMS and, and, or the iteration in the CMS, <coughs> and you can go ahead and reuse it. So if you were to use the same content and open it up in Arbor Text, you wouldn't see any different. It's the same context. It's just two different ways of, of, of authoring the same uh, content. The web editor has some limitations to its capabilities compared to the full editor, but for the purpose of, of, of um, content contribution or, or a simpler use case of, of, of authoring, there is absolutely no limitations uh, to it. Um, and the final one would be the, the that we also have our review editor. And, and this is another uh, technology. This is actually our own cloud-based technology. Um, that then publishes the document up to a um, an, an Amazon server where you then can go online and and review a document. You can add comments, you can add suggested texts, you can uh, comment on other people's comments, you can hide and, and and disclose comments, and you can accept as as a review owner. You can actually um, start a review and you can uh, make sure that 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 it closes in time that people have done their stuff and and you know you can are the only one who can accept uh, changes to the to the document um, it works um, um, perfectly also if you want to bring it on to the um, the long haul flight that you're doing and read all the boring documentation do all the feedback offline and then uh, go online and 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 feed it back into the systems so yeah um thanks for my time um believe me people are spending a lot of money and 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 time and and hassle with with introducing xml um, um and and you know there there's it, the case of uh, return on investment on a system like this is typically very easy uh, to make um uh, we we encourage you to come back to us and and ask us more and um, I would surely love to do more one-on-one uh, -on -one demonstrations where I could talk about your content content and and your opportunities to go go this way and and uh, that that would you know just reach out to your uh, uh, boundary systems uh, representative and and uh, we'll take it from there basically um, and. Yeah, looking forward to hear from you all. Any questions or whatsoever? Then I'm 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 not sure how I how I use Jonas, this. Yeah. Jonas, at this time there is a question that has come through. Please click on the triangle next to the questions um, part of the the task pane, and then you can see them come through that way. This one yeah. reads: Any issues with key refs and translation? I, I got it on screen as well. Yeah. No. Yay. Um, is, is the is the perfect answer to that question um, the, the the issue is I don't think is is the translation agencies because what we do with translation agencies is when we send this to them the key ref tag will have a um, it will have a, um, a translate no uh, parameter set to it um, so so the the, the 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 translate no parameter will prevent them from even touching this uh, this one. Um, in the um, key ref element, we have language dependent uh, translations. So it's it's in this case it's a technical value, meaning it'll be the same in Swedish, Danish, Norwegian, Finnish. Um, but in in America, you might have a different value so instead you you don't want to use liters you want to use gallons and you want to use yards and inch and what have you um, the only thing we would have to do is that in the excel sheet there would be a, a language tab for us language meaning that if we publish for us it would fetch the data from that tab instead of the the um, 
instead of the um, European tab. Um, so no, the, 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 it's not really an issue. It's just it, it's just a bit of a diligence from from our, our from the authoring and from the, the the publishing side. What you can, of course, can, can happen is that you you send something off to release. And you have empty values, or you haven't, you know, done the job when you send it away, and you make late changes, um, and you still need to republish the document. Is because you change it in the Excel doesn't mean it comes into the PDF automatically, and we've had customers who forget that sometimes. Uh, so most of the challenges we're seeing with with key definitions and the and the reuse in this content context has been around. Uh, the collaboration internally within our customers, who's responsible for the data, where does the data reside, where, which is master data, and where does it come from. But we urge all our customers today to at least, you know, if you can just have an Excel sheet and, and, and to begin from that, it's at least a lot better than, than trying to, to type this into the, to the document allowing the, the and, and using the key ref element that then automatically has a translate no will save you cost um, from, from, from day one. So you can start simple here as well, or you can go advanced, which is then when you start integrating uh, uh, user string texts into this and, 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 and it gets, can get quite complex as well. I hope that was an answer to my question. Are there any other questions at this time? Jonas, I'm not seeing anything else come through. So I appreciate all of our customers' time as well as thank you to Jonas for providing this presentation. It'll be up on our YouTube channel um, within a day as well as our other previous presentations. And if you need anything, please contact Jonas or Boundary Systems Sales team directly for any other questions. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. Have a good weekend or a good week. <laughs>